Georgia 10, Clemson 3 was the final. And it all was won on a turnover. A pick six, DJ Uyangalele throwing the ball to Justin Ross. Justin just ran a bad route. You, you were supposed to get back into the flat, and you're supposed to go fight for the football in that spot. That was the game, or the play that turned the game around. And other than that... Well, it was the only score. Both, yeah, defenses, only pitched, both defenses pitched a shutout. This was, uh, this was surprising. The total EPA for both of these... So I'm going to be using a lot of advanced stats. EPA is expected points added for those that, that want to figure it out. But there's a, a new site that's out, gameonpaper.com. EPA for Clemson for this game, total EPA was negative 32.77. George's was negative 12.68. I will tell you this. DJ, I, I, I do think that he's okay. He he made some big throws, but their offensive line, I mean, I brought this up when we did the show on Friday. Their offensive line is is not good. Now, it could be the fact that they were going against George's defensive line, and I don't know that their offensive line is going to have nearly as many problems throughout the rest of the ACC schedule. But, but hang on now. Whoa. Oh. That, the, the, those two things aren't just necessarily related. Their offensive line could still be really bad. Yes. And still not struggle with anybody in the ACC. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I don't, so, so I don't yes, think Georgia's defense is great, and they won't play another defense that good. But even when they play, they won't even play a good defense the rest of the time. I, I tend to agree. I, I will say this. I also think Georgia has set themselves up to go undefeated the rest of the way. The only issue that I'm seeing with Georgia, those wide receivers did not impress me. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just, I just, I don't think we're getting anybody undefeated. I don't I think don't. so either. There were major flaws with both of those teams. Georgia did look good. Clemson, their defense did look really good. JT Daniels, not great. Did not have a lot of touch on some of those passes that you really need to have. I, I, I mean, there's flaws with both of these teams. It, it was. I, I will tell you this: as an old man, I kind of enjoyed the the slugfest that was going on there. I just it, it reminded. It was the the Penn State Wisconsin concept of play defense, let the other team make the mistake, and it it, it was old school way of doing it. But I don't I, know that that was it. I think I think this was a situation where neither one of these offenses were good. I, like yes, both agreed. of these defenses are very good. Not taking anything away from that. I think when both of these offenses play good defenses, they both struggle. I don't think JT everybody said JT Daniels was going to be the, the the bell of the ball for the SEC. And I just I never understood that. I, I don't think that just because you're the returning guy from last year means anything. He, you know, he is good, not great. And and that offense is good, not great. Yeah. No, it, it, you are like there's not a right. defense that's probably going to shut them down again completely and keep them out of the end zone an entire game. But there's a lot of good defenses in the NF in the SEC that that will slow them down and give them problems offensively. Yes, so 100. percent Like if Florida can score, like I don't think that Georgia can score enough to keep up with Florida. So yeah, it's, no, I, that, I'm telling you, I like my. I'm still good with my Florida pick in the SEC East. I can I can understand that. I'm so, not wor- I'm not worried right now because I think they can score, and and I don't know that Georgia can can win a shootout with anybody. I might be wrong. It's week one. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's definitely week one, and it, you could you could certainly tell it all day on Saturday. You, you people were playing sloppy. Oh my goodness. So Kirby Smart does get the monkey off his back. He does win one of these big time games. Does that change the perception of him? Yeah, maybe. I mean, well, it's it's better than losing another one, right? Yes, yes. Like, I mean, that's the biggest thing is 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 winning helps. Does it completely absolve all of your flaws and coaching mistakes? I don't know. You've screwed up about six games in the past, all right? Yeah. So you've won a big one, and you've lost about six. So, you know, you'll get another chance this year in the cocktail party. That'll, that'll be a big game. At some point in time, they'll probably end up playing another big game. We just don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.